Uh, so you've performed software recovery the right way, right? So you know how to do it. So what's next? The next step. Let's say you are doing it right, and you, you, you want to get a bit further, right? So pretty much all data recovery companies, professional data recovery companies, never, never was created just the day one and get all the tools. They all go the same way. They do software recovery, and then get step further and step further. And that, that tool, and next tool, next tool, experience, skills, learning curve, right? Every, it's like any business. You're just going step by step. So what, what is the next step after you have all the software tools that, that you do? This is obviously handling disk level uh, issues, right? And why is that? Because uh, in terms of return of investment, that's the next step. Because drive level uh, tools are not just expensive. They're expensive in terms of training and skills required to operate them. Okay? And uh, I personally don't recommend anyone to actually go to drive level issues if that's not your full time job. Because it is like be prepared that at least like if your shop decided to do to get yourself into debt recovery uh, uh, industry, uh, plan to have full-time employee, okay? Because this is really like uh, everyday work, everyday learning process, and we will help you uh, to to you know to to tell you how to grow yourself. It's not a problem. It's just that it's a long, long term, okay? It's drive level, but as far as disk level and read instability issues are concerned. That's, that's a pretty straightforward way. So you buy hardware data recovery imager, and from day one, you're good to go. Okay? So learning curve, pretty much not, nothing. On the other hand, efficiency, speed, how much data you will be able to recover by using that tool depends on your skills. But it's, it's really about uh, optimizing your process, getting more data, or in a faster, fa faster way, or s in a safer way. Okay? But uh, after you bought the hardware data recovery imager, you can start doing processing disk level issues from day one, okay? C using just default configuration. <clears throat> So what uh, disk level uh, issues, again, uh, I briefly mentioned the first presentation, but this is resulting from degraded read write heads, so disk platters, occasional firmware exception, when drive occasionally clicks or, or, or stop responding, mechanical or electronic instabilities, again, when the drive not completely failed, but it's operating somehow, but very unstable. It has different kind of issues. <clears throat> And uh, the cases that are processed uh, uh, with drive with disk level issues is problematic drive that still respond to some commands, okay, still somehow functioning. <clears throat> and tool needed to disk level issues are handled by hardware uh, data recovery uh, disk imaging tools, okay. So why hardware data recovery? Why uh, software cannot uh, handle disk level issues? First thing, uh, it's lack of direct control over the drive, right? Again, we have to go through system software, and whatever system software can do, it can do. But there is nothing else we, we can do. <clears throat> lack of exclusive access to the drive. Again, as soon as the drive is being mounted, all applications uh, uh, that, that are run in the background of the operating system may try to get access to, for whatever reason. So even if you just execute one imaging software or one data recovery software, uh, still there are plenty of processes that are run in the operating system that are trying to access your drive. So there is no uh, way to uh, have exclusive access to the drive. Then another thing, standard ATA controllers not really handling well different deviations from ATA protocol. So as soon as uh, drive starts kind of acting weird, okay, starts acting not as to ATA specification, the hardware itself, ATA controller may drop connection to the drive, okay? So even ATA controller. With the hardware imaging, uh, we have proprietary ATA controller. We have a ATA controller with a special design, okay, which is designed to handle different kind of protocol deviations. But if this is your regular computer, standard computer, uh, even if you do everything, for instance, even if you uh, run a, a rapid drive tester, 
okay, our new utility. As I told you, it works, it will work in most cases, but if it doesn't identify the drive, it's not 100% guarantee that the drive uh, still, you know, still, uh, so it, it's not 100% guarantee the drive has drive level issues. It still could be some kind of degradation that leads to the fact that your ATA controller cannot communicate to this drive, okay? So there are some hardware limitation with, with standard uh, uh, computers. And uh, uh, other hardware limitation like lack of ability to reset or repower the drive. Obviously, repowering the drive is it's one of the things that has to be provided by, by professional data recovery equipment because drives sometimes just go offline, just stop responding, and they just need to be rebooted. Right? If you're running software, you, you, you don't have that capability because even if you repower it manually, you know, the system software will drop it and will not remount it. Okay? An application that is like imaging utility will lose that drive. Okay? So, uh, but it's not even uh, about not just the repowering. Uh, uh, the hardware also needs to have different kind of resets. Okay? Because uh, usually the regular computers just have uh, software reset. And, and there are plenty of different other types of reset that sometimes work much better on the drive. <clears throat> okay, and uh, that's why uh, that, this is an example of uh, DDI again, it stands for Deep Spark Disk Imager, but this is uh, re it, this represented like any other hardware imager, proper hardware imager. Uh, as you can see, the entire left panel with the kernel or say API or software is removed, and now we use only DDI operating system. So it's proprietary. It has to be proprietary operating system. Why it has to be proprietary? Because as soon as you have a regular purpose operating system, it will start trying access in the drive. Okay, system st software will start trying to mount and, and do something about it. And uh, as you can see, it's a custom firmware and proprietary IT controller. So, so uh, comparing these two models, as you can see, this is not just about software, right? But this is also about uh, proprietary hardware that, that is processing uh, any kind of instabilities uh, with the drive. <clears throat> now, what is uh, that recovery imaging? So it's a confusion, especially from IT world. Right, uh, people are always talking about imaging tools, imaging utilities. So, what is difference? Uh, what is the difference between data recovery imaging tool and a regular purpose imaging tool, even if it's hardware imager? Okay. So, the first thing is is a goal. It's a completely different goal. A regular imaging tool is just a tool to copy data from one drive to another, right, sector by sector. Where data recovery imaging tool is is the main purpose is to retrieve data from a problematic drive and then copy it to a good drive. You see? So basically, it's a different goal. It's not about copying data. It's about retrieving data. It's about processing all instabilities of the drive and still digging in and get everything that is possible to get. So this is what uh, in data recovery industry called imaging tool. Okay? Completely different. This is uh, this is uh, this brings lots of confusion, and, and not just from IT world, but forensics world also. People from forensics world are also referring. Oh, I have I have hardware images. Don't worry, you know I have plenty of them. But it's it's a different different thing, right? So your hardware imager is built to copy data. Our hardware imager is built to retrieve data, to to uh, assume that we work with problematic drive. And, and build, designed to handle all those problems to get data, okay? So, and the model is, with the regular images, is basically a array of sectors, okay? It's just, just, just an abstract uh, data storage device, and you just copy sector zero, one, two, three, four, and to the maximum, where a professional data recovery imaging tool has to process different media issues has to know each sector belongs to what head, okay? Being able to image head by head, or being able to image only drives with certain problems, media problems, okay? Sectors with certain media problems. So it is aware of physical structure of the device and, abil and has ability to handle different issues, right? So as you can see, regular imaging tool quite quite different from data recovery imaging tool. 
It, this is, again, I'm just telling you because of lots of confusion that are coming on the market about imaging, hardware imager.